Hi, this is Dr. A with a clinical chemistry review video. We're going to look at gonadal function to disorders of the testes. So um, there are several disorders of sexual development and testicular hypofunction. First one is hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, uh, characterized by low testosterone. So again, you have too much of the gonadotropic hormones, so high levels of um, the GnRH and possibly LH and FSH, but then not enough, not a, there's no response from the gonads, and so there's no testosterone um, that's produced. There's Klinefelter syndrome, is the presence of an extra chromosome, so we have two X's and a Y. We have testicular feminization syndrome, it's the most severe form of androgen resistance syndrome, uh, and so they, they have feminization characteristics. There's 5-alpha reductase deficiency, uh, it's a rare cause of androgen insensitivity, and it results in mutation encoding the type 2 isoenzyme. Uh, and so the you know, testosterone can't be uh, activated and have its effect at the physiological level of the cells. Uh, myotonic dystrophy uh, presents with primary hypogonadism, frontal balding, diabetes, and muscle weakness, atrophy, and dystonia. There's also testicular injury and infections, so such as mumps or chitis. You can also there's also Sertoli cell only syndrome. Uh, it presents with small testes, high FSH levels, azospermia, and normal testosterone levels. And hypogonadotropic hypogonadism um, is a occurrence of low testosterone levels together with low or inappropriately normal FSH or LH levels. So hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, again, hypogonadotropic means you will not have enough of the gonadotropic hormones, so the GnRH, uh, and then resulting in L LH or FSH, and then hypogonadism, then the gonads or testes won't be functioning adequately. So Kalman syndrome, uh, it will manifest as hypogonadism during puberty. Um, hyperprolactinemia can result in, again, a hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Type 2 diabetes is associated also with hypogonadotropic hypogonadism in at least 25% to 50% of the men with type 2 diabetes. And in age, um, there's a gradual reduction in testosterone after the age of 30 with an average decline of about 110 nanograms per deciliter every decade. So you know, the testosterone production is supposed to decline over, over the age of over the years basically as a uh, person ages. Pituitary disease, uh, an injury to the pituitary as a result of a tumor, um, surgical or radiation induced trauma, vascular injury, autoimmune hypophysitis, or uh, granulomatous or metastatic disease. Um, and so um, you can also have injury to the pituitary with a blow to the head and stuff. So anyway, if the pituitary is damaged, then it could fail to produce LH and FSH, and then it would have, of course, downstream effects on the gonads or on the testes. So how do we diagnose hypogonadism in a male? Um, you need to look at both clinical and biochemical features um, to be met. Um, and so um, the clinical would be, you know, signs and symptoms of low testosterone and hypofunction and small testes and that kind of stuff. The timing of the sample must be considered because uh, testosterone is released on a circadian rhythm, a daily rhythm. So testosterone levels tend to be higher in the morning for men and lower at night. So again, time of collection is important. Uh, you might consider multiple estimations of free and bound levels uh, of testosterone done, done on different days to get kind of an idea of what's going on. Uh, FSH and LH levels can be elevated in primary etiologies, so those are etiologies that uh, the problem is then um, at, at the gonads, so primary is always the level uh, of the organ itself, um, but would be inappropriately normal or low with a secondary etiology. So etiology, secondary etiology would be at the level of the pituitary or the um, hypothalamus. And so um, and that makes sense because uh, if, if the gonads are not responding, then the pituitary and the hypothalamus would be releasing higher levels of LH and FSH, and then if 
for to stimulate those gonads or cysts to produce the hormones. But if they're not able, if they're damaged, if there's a problem, then those levels might be normal because they're not responding to the low levels of testosterone or might be low because this um, maybe the pituitary was damaged or something. So a pituitary MRI should be done in secondary cases in young people. So um, again, if you see in secondary they have normal or low uh, FSH or LH, let's go see what the pituitary is doing. Uh, older people often have secondary or tertiary dysfunction, meaning uh, the dysfunction is at the level of the pituitary or hypothalamus. Um, your clinical signs and symptoms should be corroborated again with low testosterone levels. Um, guys that have low testosterone levels again lose muscle mass, are more fatigued, depressed, um, less motivated, and all of that. And so, um, but sometimes like fatigue can be also a symptom of like um, low thyroid function and stuff. So you want to make sure that you actually do can document low testosterone levels on these men. So uh, let's look a little bit about ca different causes of infertility. So if the defect is at the hypothalamus or the pituitary, then uh, the effect is going to be um, oligospermia to azospermia, so a few sperms to no sperm at all. And usually the cause are primary defects in hypothalamic or pituitary gland or exogenous endos uh, androgens that maybe they're taking uh, DHA or something like that and uh, testicular dysfunction are all causes of oligospermia or azospermia. Uh, if the defect is at the testes level, you can also get oligospermia or azospermia, so few or no sperm, um, and that could be caused by orchitis, uh, or that's an inflammation of the testes. You can have delayed or deficient sexual maturity, uh, and so testicular infections could cause that, like mumps. Um, and or you can have this decreased testosterone. So again, other causes could be alcoholism, substance abuse, chromosomal defects, and all of that. So uh, these were all causes here that would be, uh, be affecting the testes. Um, if the defects at the prostate level, you could have decreased seminal fluid there, and this could be due to infections of, of the prostate or seminal vesicles, and then that could, not having enough seminal fluid can make it harder, of course, then for the semen to get into the female, right? And then defects of the urogenital tract, um, there's retroglade, uh, um, or absent ejaculation, so can't ejaculate, or the ejaculation instead of going out the penis goes into the bladder. That's what retrograde uh, eja ejaculation is. Uh, this can be done uh, due, sorry, due to physical abnormalities or chronic diabetes. And a little bit on testosterone replacement therapy. So uh, if the men have low testosterone and especially are trying to uh, conceive, you know, have, have children, uh, maybe consider a parenteral testosterone. So that would be um, intramuscular injections. That's the most widely available and cost effective way to replace testosterone. There's also transdermal testosterone therapy, so those are patches um, and they absorb through the skin. Um, it does provide more physiologic levels. And there's testosterone gel. Uh, the gel has to be applied to non-genital skin, but there's a risk of transmission to others. So if children or spouse, um, you know, touches the gel or the area where the gel is applied, uh, they could also absorb some of the testosterone. <clears throat> there's buccal testosterone, so it's in the mouth, so it's a plastic pellet that uh, plays along the gum line. Um, it doesn't. It's local discomfort, so it doesn't really feel great, but it slowly then dissolves then into the bloodstream. <clears throat> and a uh, testosterone pellet, which is subdermal implant that releases testosterone. Um, so um, you, some of the things to consider, of course, with testosterone replacement therapy is it has to be monitored. Um, and so you want to monitor prostate-specific antigen, blood counts. So you're looking for um, possibly elevated um, red counts. Um, lipid levels should be checked every three to six months <clears throat> after the initiation and yearly thereafter, so it could affect your um, lipid levels also. You want to do routine clinical evaluations for leg edema, sleep apnea, and prostate enlargement. And um, the pharmacologic use of testosterone may reduce sperm count. And if the PSA is elevated, we need to evaluate the prostate with possible biopsy uh, to make sure it's not feeding like prostate cancer. 
and active prostate cancer is con a contraindication to testosterone replacement, as in uh, the testosterone replacement could possibly feed and make the active prostate cancer worse. Um, there is also some possibilities that um, the mandatory and testosterone replacement therapy are at a higher risk of having heart attacks, but that evidence is kind of controversial right now. And that is it. Thank you.